quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. Mount Olympus was filled with rivalry. Zeus versus Mars and Hera versus Aphrodite. This was true in the world of typewriters as well. Olympia long battled with Hermes until the late 1970s when it was decided they would probably be better off working with a new rising Asian titan of the typewriters named Nakajima. Thus, the Olympia B-12 Hermes 305 was born out of necessity in the waning days of the typewriter era. Let's check it out. Howdy folks, and welcome to another edition of Lazy Dog Typewriters. We have an Olympia B-12 in front of us, and let's just give you an overview of what this machine looks like from all different aspects. From the side, and here from the back, we see our Olympia logo, our Olympia name, and coming all around. So some of the things you'll notice right away is that this machine has a 12-inch carriage. It has a more, um, I would say, a rounded look, kind of reminiscent of the Royal Safari and Custom line, kind of an aquatic look. I really like it. This is a machine that has got a kind of unique and interesting history. So we started out with our introduction talking about how the Olympian rivalry up on Mount Olympus uh, might have played out. If you had Zeus and Apollo and Hera and Aphrodite, and they all just basically realized we had better learn to get along or we're going to get cast off this mountaintop, uh, you would have something produced like the Olympia B-12. And that is because Hermes and Olympia had to come together in the late 1970s facing their ultimate destruction and demise because of the changing economic realities of the typewriter world. Uh, and they came up and they said, you know, we'd better work together and produce a typewriter for less cost and, uh, well, just basically cheap, more cheaply than we've been able to do. And so they partnered with Nakajima in Japan, who was behind a great many other models that had been made. But they decided to come up with the Olympia B-12, also branded as the Hermes 305 um, typewriter. And that's what we have right here. So this is very reminiscent of many of the brothers of the JP-5 models. You see them as the Deluxe 300, also with a 12-inch carriage uh, at the time. I think this has slightly better looks than the um, some of the brothers do, but I do like the colors on the brothers. So it's kind of a, a trade-up. And you all know I love brother typewriters. So let's go ahead and take a look at the features of this machine. So. Of course, by this time in the era, we have a standardized with a full keyboard, meaning number one, a dedicated number one exclamation mark, a plus and minus key. Um, we have our plus and minus here. So what's that about? That is for setting your tabs. And it's a little unusual, I guess, to have it over on the right-hand side. Not a big deal. We have our ribbon color selector, red, black, and stencil. Of course, almost nobody's using stencils at this time. Uh, if Kevin will help us out, come on over here. This key here, if you can zoom in on that, Kevin, with the okay. camera. Boom. This, uh, with two lines and an arrow, is kind of a German standard way of doing margin release. And then we have one of my favorite keys, which is the automatic repeat key. Everybody loves that burp sound, uh, which is always fun, your standard space. This is a segment shifted machine. So when you press the shift key, the segment itself lowers as opposed to the carriage rising. We have our standard features, of course, which is our carriage return lever. We have our line selector, which has R, which is a release or freewheeling. There is a one, a one and a half, and a two uh, uh, setting. There's a paper bale with an integrated ruler and uh, bales. You've got your card guides as well. You've got an integrated ruler. You have a pop-up paper support. Uh, you have a paper guide, a plastic paper guide on this side. You have user settable margins where you just push and slide. Very easy to do. Uh, back on the back, you have your logo again. We've switched to the orange logo at this point um, for Olympia and Olympia International, Olympia Work, Model B12, of course, made in Japan. And coming around, let's take a look at the cover. The ribbon cover is plastic and it's kind of hinged on a backward support like that. If we can maybe unzoom, Kevin, that would be helpful. Yeah. And then the 
just a simple construction piece. And let's go ahead and take a look. We'll pop the lights on and see if that helps us see a little bit better without creating LED lines. So it takes a standard uh, ribbon spools. Uh, this one has an elite 12 character per inch typeface, which is uh, kind of fun. It gives you certainly a lot of mileage on your 12 inch carriage. So these little prongs go back in here and just click in. So um, all in all, very similar, very reminiscent of the brothers of the era. I made reference to the Olympia B12 competitive set and I wanted to give you an example of that over here on the right. This is a brother JP5 and Ted Monk will always correct me. I always want to say JP5, JP7, I get them mixed up, but mea culpa, forgive me, I believe this is the 5 variant upon which the Royal Epic and others were uh, based. But you see a very, very similar. You've got your clear instead of your tabs over on the left as opposed to being on the right on the Olympia. Uh, slightly different position of your ribbon color selector, nothing big deal. I think it's funny that the repeat spacer is on the right here as opposed to being on the left here. And of course this is the quote automatic spacer and this is the repeat spacer. Pretty small potatoes. The styling is a little bit different. This is seemingly to me a little more boxy of the 70s era and this is even though it's in the late 70s, early 80s, it's more well-rounded. So maybe you'll think of it as an Apple II uh, versus a TRS-80, <laughs> if that makes any sense to you. Um, and that's pretty much an overview. You can see the angular differences on this side. This is a very light cream on this brother. They also came in a really pretty teal. Um, this, I'm not sure how it's coming on the camera. This is actually white, and sometimes you'll see these, they fade, and they're more of a yellowed color but those can be retro clean. It's just a bit of effort. This one looks pretty good to me. Just a very, very, very faint cream on the sides. It used to be brilliant white. But this is always an intentionally a cream tan beige color on this side. And uh, two very good machines um, from competitive companies at about the same point in time. And one last thing I will show you is the cases. So just bear with me for a second for that. Okay, on the right-hand side, this is the Japanese Brother case, and they've gone to this sort of industrial plastic, which, you know, it looks kind of boring perhaps, but you know what? It really works well. Um, Smith Corona made this same type of case, um, some kind of blown plastic, I guess you call it. The only weak spot on these would probably be the plastic hinge on the very back. These are still strong 30, 40 years on, but some of the Adler cases like this, they had a really weak section in there and they're almost always broken but these brother cases are doing great and then we have the slightly larger uh, Olympia case now one thing I give them major kudos to is they have an arrow if you can see that the arrow points to up and that may seem silly but I can't tell you how many times and how easy it is to open this typewriter upside down because you have no way of knowing what side is up but you do know which way is up with the Olympia and here is its case another blown injection molded case Made in Japan. Those are the cases. Not going to uh, win any design awards, but uh, very functional. Uh, some people don't like these machines, and I guess it's because they're they're just so nostalgic for the metal SM3s or even the SM9s. This is not the same machine as an SM9. It's not intended to be. It's produced at a price point, um, but it is a very good typer. I I think that this is kind of like. Uh, one of the last iterations of typer if they were to resurrect the typers today this is one design they would look to and in fact I say that because the Royal Epics and others you now see I think Gen 3000 maybe I may be confusing that one but the I know for at least the new modern quote-unquote Royals are Chinese made and they're built off the uh, brother JP5 deluxe 300 template so um, they could have used Nakajima I guess but they went with a brother one so that's what this was competing directly against, with the same feature set with an automatic spacer, with a, a user settable tabs, a 12 inch carriage, a touch control with a high and a low here, and a plastic frame. So uh, it's kind of like, I won't say the pinnacle of typewriter design, but it's sort of one of the last designs that was made uh, in the end of the era. So let's go ahead and see how she types. Take her off her Lazy Susan and feed her up with some paper. This one likes to have two sheets of paper inserted, I think. But here we go, we can pay a pair of release over here. And we will set that up. And get ready to do some typing, all that. All right, here we go for our typing test. A quick, brown, box, jumps over the 
lazy ball. And we have that in the high, uh, in the low setting. There is, uh, it's where we all begin. All right, let's take a look at the printed output, Kevin. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll zoom in. And as you can see, it may not be obvious to you from the zoom in mode, but that is an elite typeface. Very crisp, very clear, very usable. Um, the platens on this machine has hardened. It's not soft like the brother one. So whatever chemistry, again, brother used has served them well. You can hear a little tink tink sound on this. It's not unpleasant, but it is noticeable. I would recommend using a backing sheet of paper or, as we always suggest, you can go and get a backing sheet which is a sheet protector and it will work for the same purpose and that's just about the best thing you can do short of replacing the platen which I would not recommend you do so they work fine it's just a little bit harder than normal um, and you can use uh, two sheets of paper to cushion that all in all we'd say this is a very useful functional great example of an Olympia a German typewriter a Swiss typewriter with a Hermes 305 made in Japan by Nakajima represents a time capsule I think it's a quality machine, uh, great for beginners, and uh, if you are an Olympia collector, you can certainly add this one to your collection without any apologies and be happy to have it. Got anything to say, Kevin? Um, I just wanted to ask you guys, um, do you guys want to see more Underwoods, or do you guys not? Type it in the comments. All right, that's a surprise for us all. We don't have very many Underwoods, so we'll have to see if we have any, and maybe that will be our next video. You never know where we're going to go wherever Kevin's mind suggests. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody. You too.